All right, so before the uh, program starts, I want to teach you a few things in the next seven minutes about how to optimize your focus in the rest of the day. So while I intro it, unpack your present. As we've just learned, you are now being more awesome than robots. There's no robot in the world that can do what you're doing right now. And your brain is very happy that you're doing this. Good. All right, you can put the bag under your seat and make sure you have these three balls in your hands. Awesome. Great. So it's Friday afternoon. Weekend is coming up. You've had a long week. And there's a good chance that your brain wants to go into a less active mode. And to make it so that all of you have all of your attention ready for the rest of the speakers this afternoon, I want to teach you how to optimize your focus, or at least take a few steps deeper into optimizing your focus with juggling balls. Now, the first thing that is important to understand about your brain, actually, you know what? We'll do an experiment. Sophie, can you come up here? Uh, no, you can put them down. All right, and come stand over here. And now I'm going to ask uh, you to throw one ball to Sophie, and she's going to catch it, of course. <laughs> well, I All did right. initially sort of catch it. Yeah, OK, next one. You throw one. <laughs> All right, that was good. So just one. The next one. person or the next? All right. OK, Do you want next another... person, throw one. Do you want another guinea pig? OK, good. So uh, and you can throw them back to them, which is good. Give, oh. Make sure they have their. All right. Um, and now I want to ask you to, um, let's say all four of you all throw one ball at the same time. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> all right. That's pretty good. Now make sure all of them have their balls, get their balls back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Keep, yeah, 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 yeah. keep working. OK, yeah. very good. All right. So a few of you, thank you. That, that, was, that was the whole experience. Thank you. Applause. Oh, for really? Sophie, really? Yes. <laughs> She's, she was just thank getting you. ready. So. A few things happened. Um, catching one ball at a time is relatively easy. And I had to add relatively to that one <laughs> for this specific scenario. But you did a great job. Um, one by one is actually OK. And as soon as there's multiple coming, she doesn't know what to choose and doesn't catch any. Right? Your brain is a single track device. You cannot multitask. Studies have actually shown that people who think they're very good at multitasking think they're very good at multitasking. And that's about it. So. That's one thing. Try to catch all the balls at the same time. You'll probably catch none. Focus on one thing at the same time. Now, what is great is that you cannot, you cannot multitask, which means you cannot do two important tasks at the same time. But you can do one important task and then do a second one that supports the important one. And that's what this is going to be about. So first of all, play around with these balls a bit. Just squeeze them. So we know these as anti-stress balls. Anti-stress balls actually work. If you train the muscles in your lower arm, the circulation in your hands will improve, and you will actually gain focus with it and lose stress from it, which is great. Now, just this function of your hand of squeezing a ball is a very elaborate brain function. And I love how Stefano just explained that. Um, people with a damage in their brain function can work for years until they have this back. So that's already pretty good. So I'm going to ask you to stand up now. And one of the reasons we're giving you these toys to play with is so you can use them throughout the day to optimize your focus, but also throughout your work life. Here's something to understand. So the first takeaway is your brain is a single function device. Nobody can multitask. The second one is the motor cortex activates the neocortex. And like we just learned, it takes an insane amount of brain activity to just move your hand, which also means if you do move your hand, you're activating your thinking brain, right? So the motor cortex arouses the neocortex, which is neuroscience talk for the moving brain activates the thinking brain. So solving motor puzzles with your hands is very good for you, and we're going to do that right now. So take one ball in your right hand and throw it and catch it. We can all do that. That's great. At least from where I stand, it looks beautiful. <laughs> all right, and then left hand. Throw one ball in the air. Awesome. So a lot of people can feel that their brain really has to work. Some people are struggling, but that's good. 
All right, now, make sure you, so show me, show me two balls in your left hand and one in your right hand. Awesome, great. Now what we're going to do is we're going to throw the white one, let's say, or one ball from your left hand to your right hand, right? And then you catch it with this one, like that. So, right. Great. Perfect. Awesome. OK, so now hold them again. The next step, we're going to go pretty fast, because the less you think about it, the more likely it is that you'll be able to do it. All right? So now, here's the kicker. Before you catch it, you throw the other one. So you, you were just doing this. And when that one ball that is switching over reaches its highest point, you throw the other one under it. And you catch that one too. Throw it, throw it under it. Reach its highest point, throw it under it, catch them both. OK, awesome. Perfect. Yes, chaos. I love it. All right. OK, now everybody make sure you hold your balls in your hands again and focus here. Right? Now, I'm just going to throw you, show you these three steps without the expectation of you being able to do it. So what we just did is you throw one to the other, throw one to the other. Then when that one ball reaches its highest point, you throw the other one under it, right, like that. And then you repeat, and you do that. <laughs> so here's, here's the reason I'm giving you this. Uh, oh, we've got a few. We've got a few. That's beautiful. So try it. Go. Awesome. Oh. OK, good. All right. So please uh, hold your balls, gather them if you have one left. All right, and sit down, please. So through the rest of the afternoon, awesome, awesome. Um, what I love about this is that right now, I am seeing a lot of energized faces. I'm seeing smiles. I'm seeing sparkly eyes. So the state change that happened through solving this motor puzzle with your hands is very profound. Now, the one thing that I need to add to this is that learning how to juggle, so not being able to juggle, but learning it, is better for your brain than being able to do it. Because once you can do this, you can do it forever. There's not a lot of puzzles to solve there for your brain. So your brain thrives on new input. It thrives on doing one thing at a time. And it thrives on motor skills. So if at any point you feel like your focus is falling back, you can't hold your attention with the speaker, play around with these things. If you have a break, throw them around. Next week in the office, propose to do, for example, this as you throw it back, throw it back. As you have your meeting, right? So you have a little cool, again, again. <laughs> keep going, keep going. You had it. That was good, right? So the great thing is the more you feel, the better your brain works because the more you learn. And there's a quote I'd love to end with because we have a short amount of time for this. This just serves to get your brains in the right gear. But there's this quote I'd love to end with. It says, the difference between a master and a novice is that a master has failed a thousand more times than the novice. So focus on dropping the balls as often as you can and implement this sense of play, laughter, chaos, and randomness into your workday and watch your brain thrive. Have a great afternoon. Thank you. Gotcha.